Is Koberger insane or is he actually a genius? Did he accidentally leave his DNA at the crime scene or did he leave it behind to be found so that he could have his day in court so he could have his 10 minutes of fame? That will all come out during the trial but all we know right now is a man is behind bars as the alleged killer and the families need to know us as human beings. We need to understand what would drive a person to commit such a brutal and heinous crime against four young adults whose lives haven't even began yet. My heart breaks for the family. As humans, we need to know. We need to understand so that we can feel safe. We need to know when something horrific happens, why it happened. This is the reason why superhero movies are so popular, right? Because we need to know at the end that good will prevail over evil. The horrific murders of the four University of Idaho students has rocked the nation, if not the world. As a parent, I can't begin to talk about how heartbreaking this is and how this is every parent's worst nightmare. You send your babies off to college and then you find out that they were killed brutally and without any reason. On November 13th, four University of Idaho college students were brutally murdered by a knife between the hours of 4 and 4.20 in the morning. Two roommates were in the house at the time and survived. One of the roommates actually encountered the killer as he was leaving the house. The roommate apparently became frozen in fear, went back into her room, locked the door, and for some reason that is still unknown to the public, she did not call the police for eight hours. Now, for many weeks after, it seemed like nothing was happening. The news stations were camped outside the King's Road house where the students were slain, and it wasn't until December 30th that Brian Kohlberger was arrested in Pennsylvania at his parents' house. And then after that, he was extradited back to Idaho, where he currently sits in prison without bond. So to understand how the police were able to arrest Kohlberger, there was an affidavit that was signed by the Idaho police officer by the name of Brett Payne. There's a 19-page affidavit where they lay out all the details of how they came to ascertain that Kohlberger was most likely the alleged killer who killed the four students at the house in Kings Road. The evidence consists of the following. Number one, there was a knife sheath that was found by one of the victim's beds and on the button of this knife, which has the U.S. Marine Corps logo on it, there was DNA of a male suspect. There was a footprint that was found outside of one of the surviving roommates who saw the suspect leave the house. Three is the white Hyundai Elantra that later on was discovered belongs to Kohlberger. And four, there was the evidence of Kohlberger's phone being found near the King's Road home for a total of about 12 times over the preceding six months prior to the date of the murders. Now, apparently the DNA was connected to Kohlberger because the police were able to obtain trash from outside Kohlberger's parents' house and from the trash they were able to ascertain that the DNA that was on the knife sheaths button, I believe they're saying 99.99, the child of Kohlberger's father. Now, I don't believe he has a brother or a sister that has not been reported, so it's most likely Kohlberger's DNA that is on that button. Now, something that we have to realize is the police do not have to reveal all of the evidence that they have in their affidavit. It just has to be enough to show the judge that Kohlberger is the most likely suspect and to hold him without bond, which they have done. On January 5th, Kohlberger appeared in court for the first time and the judge ruled that he would be held without bond. Then seven days later, he was back in court with his court-appointed public defender on January 12th. He waived his right to a speedy probable cause hearing within 14 days. The CNN article states that the public defender 
prosecutor representing Kohlberger requested the judge allow four or five days for the probable cause hearing this summer, and the judge indicated she would block the week of June 26 for the matter. The judge also ordered Kohlberger to remain remanded in state custody with no bond. Now, what do we know about Kohlberger? Kohlberger is 28 years old and originally from Pennsylvania. He was studying to get his PhD in criminology at Washington State University. The police affidavit also showed that Kohlberger applied to an internship with the Pullman Police Department last fall. He does have two sisters, so if he has no brother, then most likely this knife sheath belongs to him. Now, it will be excruciating to have to wait till June for the trial. It might not go to trial. It's very possible. It might settle, but he told his public defender, Jason Labar, that he was expecting to be exonerated from these charges. Now, I think it will just be a waiting game until June. I don't suspect anything will happen in the meantime, but what is coming out now are, of course, stories from Kohlberger's friends, high school friends. Recently, a nurse came out saying that she went on a date with him. Apparently, Kohlberger told his neighbor, oh, it looks like the police have no leads and this is a crime of passion. It has not been substantiated, so I don't know how truthful that is. There have been these social media posts or emails that have been found recently. Speaking of Kohlberger's mental health or mental wellness. And what we have to keep in mind is these are the writings of a 15, 16 year old boy, teenagers. I mean, we have all had our dark moments as teenagers where we were unhappy or we were dark or we didn't like our parents. What is happening now is the tainting of the jury pool. I know all of us crave safety and we want to feel safe. We want to know that the guilty, the killer is behind bars and so that we can feel safer. No one one wants to hear what if the killer is still out there. I think all of us need to know that Kohlberger is the one. But thankfully, we live in a country where you are presumed innocent until proven guilty. And most countries nowadays adopt that same criminal justice system. And because you want to be able to be in the same position if you were ever accused of a crime, you don't want to be assumed to be a criminal. I believe the police have more evidence in this case and they felt comfortable in arresting him. It's most likely more evidence will come out and we will see. My only worry is the social media and the news circus surrounding this case in any case really makes it hard to find an impartial jury. I think that is why the judge in this case issued a gag order so that none of the law enforcement personnel can release any statements to the press because the judge does not want any more information being leaked to the press that could further taint the jury pool. There is some damaging evidence here, right? Kohlberger's car was seen going towards Moscow, Idaho. I believe his phone was pinged near there right around 2.30 in the morning and was off for about two hours during the period of the killings. His car was seen through video surveillance going past the house three times. Newly released security video shows what could be suspect Brian Koberger's white Elantra driving past the crime scene the day of the stabbings. The video shows what appears to be a white vehicle driving by, slowing down near the King Road home. There is the eyewitness of the roommate who described Kohlberger's physical attributes, his height, his build, and his bushy eyebrows have all been described. We'll have to see what happens. I want everybody to get their fair day in court. As an attorney, I strongly believe in the justice system, and we are so lucky that we live in a country where we get our day in court. We get to be judged by a jury of our peers, and we will see what happens. Having a boy in his 15 saying that, I don't feel anything when I hug my parents, they're just like video games, doesn't directly make him a killer or a serial killer or a psychopath. I mean, how many of us, if we go back and look at our journals from our childhood, would cringe at what we wrote? I think the spin that the news is putting on it is concerning, you know, wanting to make a 
serial killer or a psychopath out of him before all the evidence is disclosed or shared with the public is something I think that's a little premature. I think most of us are so, myself included, even as an attorney, we're so interested in trials like O.J. Simpson. Even Amber Heard and Johnny Depp, which is so light years away from a murder case, is because we want to know that justice prevails. We want to feel safe and knowing that craziness in the world will get corrected and adjusted and justice will be found within a court system. And I will come back and let you know the next updates of this case. My heart is broken for these families of these young adults. They were in their 20s and 21 before their life even started. I'm a strong advocate of children's rights and women's rights. If you didn't catch my Balenciaga video where I talk about the child exploitation of the Balenciaga ad campaigns and their attempt at normalizing child porn, make sure to catch this video here. I'm Tyler the Hollywood attorney. Thank you so much for joining me today, even though it was a really heavy topic. Remember, we were all born perfect and we just forgot.